show here. We are gateway to China. Now, something you might not know about this particular airplane or airport is the fact that this, oh my hair from the flight, was all built on reclaimed land. Uh, which basically means that this wasn't always land. In fact, it was just water. And they basically, like, um, made the, oh, look at that, Christmas decorations, made the island larger in order to reclaim this land. So there are actually sections where if you get close enough, if you get the right angle, you can't even tell where the land stops and the water begins. That's amazing. And I'm hoping I can get more shots like that. This, this place looks so huge. And you can actually see here, we get an option here coming up where we can go to immigration or transfer. Oddly enough, this isn't something that a lot of people get. I get the choice of whether I, well, kind of, of whether I'm going to stay in the airport or not, depending on the, another thing that I gotta take care of. But oh my goodness, I'm probably gonna step out, get that stamp on my passport. All right. Ooh, right off the plane. Would you look at that? Right off the plane? Bathrooms. I like these ceiling tiles. That's kind of cool. Little triangles. That's pretty dope, actually. I don't know what's going on. Let's see. Immigration over there and some gates. Looks like everything is in English and we had to take a wild guess Chinese down this way. So that's where we're going to go. Next clip. Look at this. Everything is green. I wonder if this is real green or... Oh my goodness. These are real plants. They're not plastic. That's amazing, and this this wall is huge. Okay, so we are about to go in this thing, which is a giant train bobber. Scientifically, that's what I'm calling it, a train bobber. Something to keep in mind, even though I'm being a little bit goofy, the cool thing about this is, this airport is like, like back and forth for quite some time, been voted the Banff Airport. I don't even know where we're all going. Wow, let me tell you about that train. That's amazing. It's, it's so quick, it's so fast, it's so snappy. You don't even realize what kind of power that thing has. It surprised me the way that I'm sure some people are surprised getting into like a Tesla or something. Like, of course, they always have the signs saying like, you know, please hold on to the guardrails and blah, 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 blah. Oh my goodness. I'm telling you right now, hold on to the handrails. As soon as that train starts, you're gonna thank me a lot. I kind of wish I knew somebody on the other side because there's an escalator over there too. So I could just be like, high five as we pass by. Perfect timing. This is new to me. So I got up the escalator and I'm looking around and I was, I'm, I'm in the terminal. This is so amazing to me. I am used to being like shuttled out of airports and through immigration and all that. But basically there's a section of the mall of, of I mean, uh, there's a section of these airports that are built like malls. And that's amazing. And it's awesome on the way out. This is, I think, the first time that I've ever experienced being able to access that part before I could leave. And there's food everywhere. Oh my God, I am starving. All of that talk. I filmed a previous video about the airport in Manila and I was talking about, oh my God, that food, it looks amazing. I didn't eat the food. I mean, I did have a cookie and a brownie, but that's not a meal. Me so cool. Right over there, there's a smoking area, which may help some travelers coming here to this airport. We're gonna check out a bunch of other stuff here. All kinds of stuffs. Let's check out the stuffs. Oh my goodness, there's a 7-Eleven here. And of course, they've got all the standard duty-free stuff. Over here, through the crowd. I love the way that the signs here handle this. Like, in the Philippines, you've got, you know, local passport holders, and then you've got foreigners. That's the way that they kind of, you know, corral you. Here, you've got, like, Hong Kong pass or, uh, passport holders and visitors. Visitors sounds a lot better than foreigners. Another thing that's kind of interesting here versus the Philippines and in the States, we're all kind of leisurely walking forward. This seems to be a pretty fast process, unlike other places where I've been stuck in customs like Japan and the States and whatnot, or not customs, but immigration. And it seems to take forever, even five ever. But I mean, look, you, you're watching me. I'm walking through the line. I mean, yeah, we're kind of like, kind of one of those gerbil mazes <laughs> with, with, the, with the, little, the little ropes, but 
mean, yeah, we're all moving at a pretty decent speed here. Cool. Next clip. Oh my goodness, I just went through immigration. There's no, there's no stamp on the passport. I don't, I'm, I'm confused. I thought I would come here, I would get like, you know, one of those prized treasures. Treasured, like, stamps on the passport. No, no stamp. It was super simple. Oh my god, I was through immigration in like all of like eight minutes. They get the whole thing. That's amazing. This place is huge. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm in awe of how awesome and like streamlined and efficient everything has been so far. Wow. Next clip. So we have checked out the Hong Kong airport coming in. Now let's check out and see what the Hong Kong airport's like when you leave. So immigration exiting the country was just about as quick as entering, though the line took a little bit longer. But that's okay though, because it was still crazy fast in comparison to like US immigration, US customs, Philippine immigration, Philippine customs, etc. etc. I have to give Hong Kong and their systems like the best of everything. Oh my god, it's so convenient to travel here. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, there's a Disney. Star. I have to check this out. This is actually just right outside of where you go through security and everything. All oh, the things. So this is pretty cool. We've got Popeye's Louisiana kitchen here. We've also got a McCafe. We've got a Panopolis. Coffee and sandwiches over there. Over there. We also have the spaghetti house. Never heard of it, but I'm sure it's a fine house of spaghetti. And I think I already mentioned the McDonald's. McDonald's. Did somebody say? Yes, they did. They have places I've never even heard of, and that's awesome. Adjison Ramen. Maybe it's meant to be pronounced like I don't. I don't know. I'm not gonna make any guesses. And you know what? If I forgot anything, there are plenty of stores down there. Wow, so many things. I see the word express over here. I gotta move my way towards it. I'm hoping that it's a place that sells Bicol Express. Even though I know that's a Filipino dish, not a Hong Kong dish, I'm hoping that they sell Bicol Express because I'm really kind of craving Bicol Express. Okay, so I got closer. No, it's not Bicol Express. But I'm still not disappointed. This place is called Pizza Express. Let's go check it out. Long story short, I was very disappointed in Pizza Express. It's one of those high class hoity toity places that puts the tomatoes like on the pizza rather than like using tomato sauce? I don't, I don't know. It's just not my style, not my speed. You know, I will admit that when I first landed and I saw all of these stores, I was like, this is amazing. Now I'm sort of capitalismed out. I don't know. Maybe it's because I've been surrounded by nothing but like shopping stuff for the past 12 hours. I am capitalismed out. <gasps> Next clip. This might be because I'm, it's getting dark and I'm getting kind of cranky, but um, you know, this place is a lot bigger than I remember when I came in. Of course, I do remember it being big when I came in. I just kind of <laughs> don't remember it being this bigger. I also think it's really kind of interesting the way that they stagger the floors. So basically, when you go down a floor, you actually end up going down like two floors. That's why these escalators are so, you know, tall, big, long, whatever you want to call them. That's kind of cool. And that's probably how they can keep such great order and stuff in here too. It's a funny thing, language. One of the messages in there has said that uh, at this stop, all passengers please alight, which makes sense in the context of like, you know, everybody get out. But it's definitely not the first thing that would have come to mind for me. I don't know, kind of interesting. If somebody wanted to be a pain in the butt. They could just like light up a cigarette or, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. You know, I can't be the only person who's ever wondered what the hell these things are, other than massaging my feet through my shoes, because they do that, and making luggage make noise on the floor. I don't, I don't know. Somebody research that. Let me know in the comment section down below. When I came in, we saw that wall, but it's down there now, and, it's, and there's no way for me to get to it, other than to just show it to you through the window. I still think it's pretty, and it's awesome that it's actual real plants and not plastic. It just came to my attention that I'm fairly certain on our way in, arriving at Hong Kong, we saw smoking areas. I don't think I've seen a smoking area at all since i doing the whole departure thing. Huh. Okay, so I did my smoking viewers a favor and I asked somebody and they said by 202, gate 202, which is down towards the end. I mean, I don't mind filming restaurants and stuff, but I don't like filming smoking areas because they're, 
I have known a lot of smokers who kind of feel like that that's not them at their best and they don't like to be filmed when they're smoking. Same reason that some people they don't want to be filmed when they're drinking and stuff like that. It's like, please don't show me at my worst. And I'm not saying that people who smoke are bad people or whatever because it's, that's them at their worst. I'm just saying that like not everybody's proud of the fact that they smoke. So that's why I haven't really like filmed any of these smoking areas for people other than to be like, it's over there. Here it's like no smoking, maximum penalty, blah, blah, blah. Which led me to believe like, wait, they said that the smoking area was there. And I'm like, and I came and I'm all like, hmm. And there's a sign there that's like smoking, which is the exact opposite of that. WTF, bro. Whoa, that is a heavy door. Oh my goodness, and there's no roof. Oh, it's got a really good view. You can see planes and stuff take off. Awesome. Next clip. The decorations for Christmas look absolutely fan freaking tastic. And I gotta give them a lot of credit on that. I mean, it's not too much, it's not overboard. It's very festive, I like it. I have no idea what a traditional Hong Kong Christmas is like. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just saying like, wait, it's 205. 205. 205 is this way. I guess I'm so tired at this point, I'm not even making any sense. I should shut up. I'm also getting kind of crabby, kind of cranky. So I guess that that's a really good time for me to go ahead and say, I hope that this video's been helpful for you. If it has, let me know in the comment section down below. Till next time, don't forget to like, subscribe, and do all those things that make me love my job. Also, be awesome to yourself and amazing to each other. Bye. So much for watching today's vlog. If you'd like to watch more content, that's on screen now. Also, if you'd like to support this channel, you can find a Patreon link at the lower right hand corner of your screen. Next vlog.